actually see advertised on TV now all the time. Mm -hmm. oh, I wondered if it was something since we have Microsoft, do we already oh, like own it? Why am I not in the right one? Oh. Maybe because I want to know this. Oh, there they are. There's John Ryder. At, you know, webinar we had for businesses today. Mm -hmm. My my the person owns the hair place I go to texted Stacy. She was out and said John desperately needs a haircut. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. How are you? Yeah. I would just I just texted Juliet and said it's six twenty six. Yep, they'll be here just sec. They're off now. My husband might have just a So John, how many people were in that um, forum today? I think counting the people participating, I think uh, John said, Lauren told him like 52. I'd like to have had more, but I, I'm hoping it'll pick up steam as we get the word out. Right. But that's a decent start, I think. No, I think so. Mr. Reiner has his hand up, but I can't do anything with him over here. Oh, let me make you a co-host on a sec. Oh, hey, John. Hello. Oh, hey, Andre. Hello, Council. Hello, John. Hello. Hello. Again. <laughs> yeah, <Square. laughs> Hello. So, John, one thing you'll need to do, I don't know if, um, I know I had emailed you the PowerPoint presentation. It's part of the packet but I'll need to either be able to share my screen or if you want to. Uh, I'll, I'll make you a co-host co because I don't have it digitally up right now. Okay. Okay. I don't care about that. It says Mr. Landy. You can leave <laughs> that one alone. <laughs> but yeah, that's an important Nice thing. Twitter handle, Andre. <laughs> There's another one on there that says July 1st, but I need, we need to make sure that one says Hey, John, you're a co-host. Okay, yeah, thank you. you. So just so I can uh, give it and a... it's come up on page. Is that? I'm going to do a test. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Mayor. Does that work? Yep. Okay, good. And, uh, Mayor, when we get to the minutes, I have uh, two small corrections that Cindy flagged. So noted, I'll go to you first. Yep, she's nitpicky that way. <laughs> <laughs> is Mr. Reiner gonna unshare his screen or is he gonna leave it there? I uh, just, <laughs> there go. Oh good, Conrad's here too. So Leanne and Julie, oh Juliet's here. And Leanne will be in, I assume. Councillor Rupert.
I just texted uh, Leanne the um, webinar ID number in case she doesn't have it and password. We're going to give Councillor Obrey um, a minute or two to get here as she was wrapping up her last meeting that she chaired. So if everyone could just bear with us for a moment. Thank you very much. I just talked to Councilor Aubrey. She said she'll be on just a second. She's almost there. Thank you. <clears throat> Have you heard from Councilor Zapari, Mr. Burton? I just talked to Councilor Zapiri. He's having a little bit of computer problems. He's hoping to be joining in a few minutes. I think it's probably okay to start and have him join in progress. Very good. And I'm sure Councilor Obrey will be with us shortly as well. I'm set to go, uh, Mayor and uh, John. Okay, I'm gonna- Mr. Greeley. I'm gonna hit the live on YouTube right now. So give me a sec here. Excellent. Let's see if it works this time. Now, Sean is asking, oh, I've got to do the Zoom sign in, Sean, is that right? It's asking for login. Yeah, you don't have to worry about it. I got, I got it all set. I'm, I'm already right. recording. Yep. Okay, good. All right, everyone's set. Okay, good evening, everyone. I'd like to call to order the Tuesday, May 12th Town Council Committee of the Whole meeting. It is 635. Councilors present. Bordelon, Baumgartner, Franco, Heed, Melendez, Parker, Granitowski, um, Councillors Obrey and Zapiri have notified that they will be with us shortly. So we are seven to start the meeting. We are on to item three, calendar and communications. And um, I am, as I have done at most meetings, during this public health crisis, I have given the floor to Mr. Burt to begin 
to give us an update on the public health emergency. Mr. Burt. Uh, good evening. Uh, I was notified by Ledge Light Health today, the department today, that unfortunately we have one more COVID related death, an 83 year old male. Um, that makes 17 in the town during this pandemic. Uh, of course, all our hearts go out to the family. Um, we hosted a uh, business forum today uh, with the city, the town did. Let me grab my notes one sec here. Um, there's a virtual meeting with local businesses. As we know, the partial state reopening is May 20th if all continues on as scheduled. Uh, we had Mayor Granitowski do opening statements. John Reiner acted as MC, uh, Mayor Hedrick, as well as many uh, departments of our uh, members of our planning department and, and the building official for the city uh, and the health department. We gave out information on what's happening with the uh, governor's partial startup, how our zoning works with uh, helping the businesses out. The city did the same thing, uh, answered questions. We had approximately a little over 50 participants in the meeting. Uh, we do anticipate there will be more meetings to come as information uh, comes out and things evolve. Um, I thought it was a great start though. Uh, very good first uh, meeting, had some positive feedback on it already. Um, and in terms of the town proper, uh, we've been working on plans for individual departments and had a, a staff meeting this afternoon going over each department's um, draft plan. We've got to merge them together. Now, one of the first steps we need before we could do any kind of opening is we're working on plexiglass shields to protect staff. Um, uh, Greg Hanover in the Public Works Department is working on that. Uh, so I don't anticipate it would be by May 20th. Uh, maybe uh, I'm, I'm going to ballpark right now. We'll put out information as it firms up and maybe June 1st, but it will be a stepwise uh, reopening. It won't be jumping all in. It'll be a, a cautious, safe opening. But as plans come together, I'll share them and touch base with everybody. Um, did you want me to mention at this point the request from Clint Wright um, concerning the, uh, the cleaning at the, the uh, Police department and maybe annex. Did you? Did um, you if you don't mind, if we could save that for other business, that way we can open it up to the council to give their consensus at that point, please. Okay. That's all I have. Thank you. Um, before we start, I just want to give a quick um, kudos to a young woman in our community named Erica Chandler, who has started um, a GoFundMe called Groton Feeds Groton. There was an article in the paper today, and she has done amazing things in three days. Um, she's raised over $6,000 and if you saw the article in the paper, um, the donations go to buy restaurant gift cards from our local restaurants and then those gift cards will be given to Groton Human Services to help our neighbors who are in need. So it's, uh, you're getting double the, um, double the good for your money and I just want to say thank you to Ms. Chandler before I um, forgot about it. So we will go round the table now. So we are starting with Councillor Bumgarner, please. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, <clears throat> I just attended a rules committee meeting. Um, and other than that, I have nothing to report. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Baumgartner. Um, Councillor Parker. Councillor Parker, do you have any communications? We can come back to Councillor Parker. Uh, we'll go to Councillor Franco. I do have questions. I have. A... Councillor Parker is not coming in very clearly. Yes, we we've heard. Um, Councillor Parker, um, if you could check your audio, and then we'll go to, we'll go to Councillor Franco and come back to you. Also. Council Baumgartner at the rules meeting and various emails. I send my condolences. Oh, is it not working? We're having trouble hearing. No, it's um, it's the um, strange. Can you guys hear me? Um, sounds like a robot. Um. Councillor Franco, why don't you go ahead and Councillor Parker can get the communications in order. Okay, so oh. I did the Mystic Chamber of Commerce restaurant meeting last week. 
as well as um, the Economic Development Committee monthly meeting. And they also would like to be holding business forums. Um, went to, I attended the reopen. I was just at the last meeting. Here. Can we possibly mute Councillor Parker? Me. Um, something is not working right. Okay, so I'm going to continue. Um, attended the reopen grant and business forum today. The um, video will be available for all to see as it was recorded. Um, I spoke to many grant and business owners regarding the hardships they've been facing as they've, um, most of them have very reduced limited hours. Um, I had started a Facebook fundraiser for the Grant and Food Locker, which I will be ending on May 18th. And I will now be putting my support behind the Grant and Feeds Grant and Fundraiser and Erica Chandler. Um, had a great conversation with her a couple days ago, and I think she's going to be doing great things. Um, also, another uh, new group on Facebook called Adopt a Class of 2020 Senior Grant in Connecticut. It's actually Grant and CT where you can join the Facebook group and adopt a Fitch Senior high school student. You can send letters, maybe a gift or anything to make their graduation special. As this is a new thing that communities are doing to make this year special for seniors around the country. And again, it's adopt a class of 2020 senior Groton CT on Facebook. I've also heard that the Groton Senior High School will be holding their graduation commencement ceremony on June 19th and it will be held in, um, as an outdoor drive-in movie style event. And there's supposed to be more info to come on those details. Though I'm happy, I'm very happy to hear that they will be working on a commencement ceremony for the graduates where in a certain way they can all come together. So that's my report, thank you. And we will go on to Councilor Heed. Uh, nothing to report. Councillor Overy has joined us. We are at eight councillors. Councillor Overy, do you have a report for us? Um, no, I will just tell you I'm happy to be back in Connecticut. Uh, I thought the program this morning uh, for information for people with businesses was excellent. Extremely well done. Thank you very much, John Burt. I'd like to say thank you to John Reiner. He had more to do with it than I did. <laughs> well, that's true. I, I don't, you know, I think what was important, everybody. <laughs> if I might, I think the thing that was important is everybody was very calm, very concise, and very helpful, and gave the feeling that they wanted to help everybody. I thought it was great. Thank you, John Reiner. Okay, we have um, we have Councillors of Perry and Councillor over with us, so we are at nine counselors. Um, we will come back to um, Councilor Parker in a minute. Um, we are going to Councilor Borderline, please. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to say that I, you know, continue to think of the families of Groton, uh, the businesses as well, and um, my condolences to the families um, and all the frontline workers um, as, as I, in, in my uniform, just still coming back from work myself. So, um, continue up the continue the good hard work and I hope everyone stays safe and um, thank you to the town for putting on the um, forum for the businesses and getting some ideas and thoughts out there thank you and Councilor Melendez please Councilor Melendez you're muted oh hey <laughs> uh, nothing to report. Uh, just second uh, what Councillor Obrey said. I, I watched that um, meeting earlier this today, and, and it was very it was it was very helpful and informative. So thanks. Thank you, Councillor Zapari. Councillor Zapari, do you have anything to report? We'll take that as a no, and we'll go back That's to correct. the- It's a no. That's a no, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll go back to Councillor Parker, and hopefully this sound issue is resolved, and because we'd love to hear from Councillor Parker. 
Mr. B Mr. Burke, can you, un there we go. Can you unmute on your end? Thank you. We're set. You have the floor, Councilor Parker. Hmm. Can you hear me? Hello? Yeah, thank you. We're here. Oh my goodness. Okay, we can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Can you hear me? Yes. Hello? Yes. I don't what it just what all right it worked in the last meeting i don't understand why i'm having difficulty right now you can't no i'm just saying oh, good <laughs> all yeah, right i did, I did too <laughs> okay just that i attended the meeting the rules committee meeting wonderful meeting we're moving plug along and just a lot of emails and prayers to the families that are hit with this COVID-19 and to the ones who are sick with it, I pray for them to get better. Thank you, Councilor Parker. All right, we are on to approval of minutes. And this is on page two. Councilor Bumgarner, would you like to move approval of the minutes, please? Absolutely, well, I'll, I'll make a, a motion to approve the uh, I'm sorry, uh, approve the Council of the Whole, um, the Council of the Whole meeting minutes for May 12, 2020, so moved. Second, Bordelon. Moved by Baumgartner and seconded by Bordelon. And I will go to Mr. Bird. I believe um, he has a correction to the minutes, please. Um, did, first of all, did he say May 12th or April 21st? I thought he said May 12th. I just want to double check. Council I said, Baumgartner, could you... May 12th, May, May 12th, five, the 5th, uh, 05 May. Yeah, uh, April 21st. These are the minutes from April 21st. Would you like to change your um, or adjust your motion, sir? Oh, shoot. Yes. Um, I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, yes. I will make a motion to approve. That's, that would be today's meeting. I'm sorry, I'll, I'll do it, uh, make a motion to approve the special meeting minutes for uh, April 21st, 2020, so moved. Second, board alum. Okay, thank you very much for clarifying that. It was just a matter of the date. Mr. Burt, what did you find? Well, uh, Ms. Landry found, and if you go to page four of the minutes, the last full paragraph, you'll see it says July 4th for one thing, it should be July 1st. July 5th. So Can you repeat July, that again, please? The July, last page? July 1st instead of July 4th. Okay. And then two sentences down, it says Mr. Landry. Okay. You caught that, huh? <laughs> <laughs> she told me not to say anything, though. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. Uh, do, is that it, Mr. Burt? Yes. Thank you. Do any counselors have um, corrections on the minutes? Yes, um, Madam Mayor. Councilor Baumgartner. Um, on page five, um, it has, uh, I believe, I, I correct, anyone correct me if I'm wrong, but it says um, for the motion to recommend a resolution to approve the uh, governor's executive orders for, for the tax deferment program. Um, that uh, it was moved by Councillor Heed. I believe it, I moved that item. Um, is that, am I wrong in that or? Uh, I, I didn't move it. It must have been Andre. I'm sorry, Councillor Bozardin. I'm looking back and it looks like um, moved by Baumgartner and seconded by, no, that's not correct. That's for a different motion. Um, I had Bumgarner and Obrey, but I think that was for minutes. Hold on one second. Let me flip. It was Bumgarner and Melendez I have written down. Mr. Bird, could you hear what I said? Yes. That way it'll be captured. So that one, that was item, let's get it correct here. That was do, 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 5A 2020 Governor Executive Order 7S. And the um, person who made the motion and the second are incorrect um, in the minutes. And I have it as um, Bumgardner Melendez rather than he Melendez. 
Councilor Baumgartner, is there anything else? Yes, and if possible, if there could be um, just a, a sentence that suggests why I um, had proposed changing, is, um, changing um, or creating that um, motion to begin with, because originally we had five proposals and then um, it just the minutes didn't reflect why that sixth refer, uh, the sixth motion was proposed. So just creating some, I think, language there. Um, but if not, then I'll concede at that point and move on. <clears throat> Thank you. Any other counselors have corrections to the minutes? Seeing none, we will vote on acceptance of the minutes 2023-07, April 21st. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? So moved unanimously with nine counselors present. We are on to <coughs> Excuse me, new business 2022 72 suspense list FYE 2020. This is on page 10. Excuse me. Well, on camera, so you don't need your mask if you want, unless you want. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. So, um, Councillor Parker, we're going to give it a shot with your audio. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I make a rec uh, I recommend a resolution to approve the suspense list of FYE 2020. I so move. Second, Bordelon. Moved by Parker and seconded by Bordelon. Thank you very much, Councillors Parker and Bordelon. Um, Ms. Landry is, or Director Landry is here with us this evening, I believe. Yes, I am. You have the floor, ma'am. Alrighty, thank you very much. Um, as you know, the Connecticut state statutes require that once a year we compile a list of those taxes um, that should be suspended. And these are bills, uh, these are taxes that have been billed a number of times, particularly the back taxes, and they're deemed to be uncollectible. So what we're able to do is to cut down on the expenses of our, our postage and paper and toner by um, removing those from our books as collectible, although they, it doesn't remove the tax. The tax is still collectible for 15 years, but we no longer bill for those when we move them to the suspense file. And this year's um, is considerably less than last year. It's $389,657.78. And that compares to the list from 19, which was $514,317.91. And if you recall from last year, we had a large subdivision that the town had taken over that was town owned. And that's what um, drove that larger number from last year. And we also had some several mobile homes that we suspended for last year. Um, the tax office has been fully staffed now, so they've been able to be um, a little bit more proactive and aggressive, and they have, were able to resolve several uh, delinquent personal property and motor vehicle accounts, which also resulted in a lower suspense this year. So if you have any questions, I do have Melissa McGuire, the tax collector, here with me. Thank you, Thank you Landry. Um, do any counselors have questions? Councilor Obrey? Yes. Do you do we put a lien on the property when they don't pay it? Real estate, yes, and personal property, yes. We place a UCC lien, Uniform Commercial Code. Okay, so that makes it they they can't register a car or anything like that. No, a lien is on the land records, and the Uniform Commercial Code lien for personal property is recorded with the Secretary of State's office. The only stoppage for um, cars is they're not able to register their motor vehicle and due to the governor changing from two year registrations to three year registrations, you may see an increase of the motor vehicle delinquencies going up. Thank you. Councilor Bordelon. Thank you. Um, I had a quick question. I was just wondering, um, so how long have we been collecting the taxes on these particular ones that now go into this category? It varies from year to year, mm -hmm. but taxes are collected in years. Um, you know, we suspend them for various reasons. Yep. I did submit a pie chart so that you can see that majority of the suspense is returned <coughs> mail. Um, you know, we do have um, 
they moved out of the state, out of the area. So sometimes we don't have a good mailing address for them. So in suspending them, we can turn them over to the collection agency where they can do skip tracing um, and find a good mailing address for these people and try to get these bills resolved, especially if they're in the military. Sometimes our military aren't aware of Connecticut and being taxed with motor vehicles. So again, we're able to get those bills resolved for our military personnel as well. And, and if there is a, um, uh, a tax, taxes owed that you do have a lead, a lead on and there's not returned mail, is there a possibility to still send out a statement once a year just to keep it current? We send out delinquent statements twice a year um, for, we do mass mailings in the fall and in the spring yep. um, on all real estate, motor vehicle, personal property. Resident, uh, residential sewer, we just started um, last year attempting to send out statements twice a year the residential sewer bills are often the forgotten bill. I was, just, I was referring to the ones that now are gonna go into the suspension file. If you have a current address and no return mail, I know that you're doing it twice a year, but if you have a lead on them, is there a way to still send out at least one bill a year on those? It was multiple billings. That's yeah. why that they would be suspended. If we still have a good mailing address for these people and we have a lien, Mm -hmm. um, we wouldn't be suspending. Okay, thank you, thank you. Councilor Zapari. I just wanted to know uh, when the ta current tax bills will be going out. Hopefully July 1st, uh, before July 1st, June 30th. And the taxes are due, due on July 1st, aren't they? They are correct, but we cannot accept any payment prior to July 1st because it is um, a different fiscal year. Thank you. Okay, I'm not seeing any other hands from any of the counselors. So having said that, we will vote on 2022-72 suspense list FYE 2020. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? So moved unanimously. Thank you, Director Landry. We are on to item 5B. 202306 Long Island Sound Futures Grant. This is on page 16 in your packet. And I believe we are on Councillor Franco. I make a motion to recommend a resolution endorsing the submittal of the grant application for the LISFF for the Resiliency and Sustainability Assessment in Downtown Mystic and authorize the town manager to sign all required doc grant documents for such program. I so second. Moved by Franco and seconded by Zapari. And Mr. Bird, uh, Mr. Reiner is going to address this? Yes. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Reiner. Good evening, John Reiner, Director of Planning and Development Services. So we're looking to apply for a grant, uh, as was mentioned, to the Long Island Sound Futures Fund for up to $70,000. So we would apply for $70,000 and there's a 50% required match. We'd be looking to utilize that with staff time, volunteer time and other resources and not necessarily looking to be utilizing any uh, town cash for that match. Initially, uh, we were thinking about how could this program uh, replicate what we we're looking to do through our CIP. But last year, the city of Groton got a similar grant or a, a grant also from this group uh, to do a resiliency study. We didn't want to replicate that exact same project that the city is doing within the town. We think we thought that we wouldn't have a good chance of getting that level of funding to replicate that other project, but we are working with the city on their resiliency strategy for the city of Groton, and there might be some opportunities to expand that out a little bit. That was something that the planner and uh, my staff were discussing. Uh, yeah, a couple months ago prior to him leaving uh, employment for the city. And I think as that project moves forward, there might be a, uh, an opportunity for us to uh, jump on board with that also. Thank you, Mr. Reiner. I just have to say, I'm very um, pleased that um, you're pursuing this grant opportunity. Uh, resilience and sustainability has been an important um, 
interest for this council and the last council as well. And I'm particularly pleased that the match can be done with in-kind services and you even mentioned volunteer services. So that's, um, that's, a, that's good news. Do any councillors wish to speak to this? Councillor Baumgartner. Yes, uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I'd just like to align my remarks uh, made by the mayor. Um, thank um, Mr. Reiner for, for his work on this grant. Um, if I'm not mistaken, and, and I um, asked this question to Mr. Bird a couple weeks ago, um, originally when we were deliberating on CIPs, um, there was a request, um, originally there was a request to fund um, a resiliency study that would cover uh, Pequonic, uh, both downtown Mystic, Pequonic Bridge, and sort of the, the town as a whole. And I'm wondering um, what um, the, uh, John, uh, Mr. Reiner, what, um, you know, how, how the town uh, ought to proceed with um, studying resiliency in Pequonic uh, Bridge if, uh, if we uh, move forward with uh, the grant for, um, for Mystic. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, good question. I think this is really kind of step one. And as we move forward through this process, you know, Mystic has uh, a number of components to it, both that commercial and residential. Uh, it's a big economic driver for the town of Groton. So I think it's a good example for us to really do a deep dive in. And uh, under that project cost, we're looking at doing a lot of public outreach and trying to establish, all right, this is how we want to focus on some of these special project areas like Mystic, like Pequonic Bridge, like some of the other uh, vulnerable areas in the town. So I think this is really kind of step one. And we would look at, you know, the Pequonic Bridge area, uh, Midway Oval, um, a lot of that area, and looking, some of our, looking at some of our future mapping for climate change and sea level rise in, and just flooding in general can be and will be uh, impacted. So that's definitely an area that is high on our priority list. Fantastic. Thank you for putting together the grant proposal and I'm um, you know, hopeful the state uh, you know, approves, uh, approves our grant. So thank you, Mr. Reiner. Thank you. I'm not seeing any other hands. Are there any counselors who wish to speak? Councilor Franco. So this has a 50% match and um, the planning department is going to cover that match. And how will that affect your um, budget? Uh, that won't affect our budget because the match can be in-kind services, so staff time, volunteer time. So if our sustainability task force is volunteering their time towards this project, we can use that towards match supplies, copies, and there may be some other grants that we can also uh, look for over uh, the course of this time period to help fulfill that 50% match, which would be $35,000. So between the number of staff people that would be working on this and the number of um, volunteers, I think that we could get that $35,000 match. So, you so it won't impact our, our dollars and cents budget, just time. So you think that maybe $35,000 worth of possibly staff time and maybe some supplies would go towards this? Correct. So we'd apply for up to $70,000 in cash to use towards uh, a, you know, a third party consultant experts in the field. And then we would be utilizing staff time to work towards that 50% match. At the same time, we will look for additional funds and other grants as they come uh, out to see if we can utilize some of the, the match with that at this point in time. We don't have to have all of the match secured now as we apply for the grant. Okay. Thank you. And, and you also said the Resilience and Sustainability Task Force, their time could be counted as matching as well. I do believe so. Thank you. All right, I see no further hands. So we will vote on 2023-06 Long Island Sound Futures Grant. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? Aye. Aye, Councillor Parker, is that an opposed? No. Thank you. That passes eight in favor, one opposed, zero abstentions. We are on to item five. Uh, I didn't, Madam Mayor. Yes. I'm not, I did not oppose that. 
Okay. You're abstaining? No? I, was in, I don't know why there's a delay on my end. No, um, I'm not. I wanted it to be 900. Thank you very much. 900. Thank you. So the vote on 202306 Long Island Sound Futures Grant is unanimous. Nine in favor, zero opposed, zero abstentions. Thank you for uh, clarifying. We are on to item. Oh, uh, thank you. <laughs> we are on to 2020. 308 economic development strategy presentation and Mr. Reiner has provided um, everyone with a PowerPoint that was in our packet and I believe he's going to do some screen sharing and we have guests with us this evening. I will let uh, Mr. Reiner, Director of Planning and Development Services, introduce his guests and we are happy to hear from you. Thank you, sir. All right, great. Uh, thank you very much. So uh, again, tonight we're going to give a, a brief overview our economic development strategic action plan that we've developed over the past uh, about 18 months. Uh, also uh, here with me on the call is Paige Bronk, our economic and community development uh, manager, uh, Sam Eisenbeiser, our economic development specialist, and Jim Demesis from Camoin 310. Uh, we've been working with Jim and his firm probably for the past five years on uh, items such as our market analysis, our tax increment financing plan, uh, as well as not only the strategic action plan, but some other projects in town. So uh, without further ado, I'm gonna share my screen. So it'll just take a second to flip over and put that PowerPoint presentation on. Uh, I'll be leading the presentation, but uh, Sam and Jim and Paige will all be jumping in and then all four of us will be uh, available for questions at the end. So let's uh, see how we can get this to work. Thank you. And is everyone seeing that? Yes, very presentation? good. Yes. All right, so um, I, I do wanna cover uh, very briefly, you know, or through this presentation, what led to making the strategy that this was not just a town driven initiative. It was something that we did with the city and the town, why this plan is different, and then really starting to dive into some of the goals and initiatives out of this plan. I should also mention that we did uh, a number of presentations uh, of this plan already uh, back in February, kind of did a road show around the town and the city, trying to get out to businesses and others to just introduce to people that we did have this new economic development strategy. So as you know, everyone who is involved in economic development that lives in the town in Groton here, we know that there's a lot of pieces to the economic development puzzle within Groton. And this plan was put together utilizing a lot of our past work, the intelligence that we're picking up, <coughs> things for the past five and a half, six years, and the team has been assembled in the way that it is. And also looking at all of those ongoing projects and initiatives that we've been working on. There's been a lot of things happening and that have been gaining momentum. Uh, also, we can't forget the fact that you know we have the big three in Groton between Electric Boat and Pfizer and the sub base as our big employment base. And thinking about that goal that we really discussed as a council um, six years ago and that we've been continuing to talk about of how do we diversify our economy, which becomes even more relevant and important you know, now in days of just the, the transition we've seen with our economy uh, and what's happening now with COVID. So, why did we do this development you know, strategy with the city? Well, the city's a part of Groton and everything good that happens within the city benefits the town and vice versa. And every time that we work together, that we communicate you know, between the, the councils, between the staff, between you know, the administration, it, it's all helping in the things that we're doing to help attract our businesses, keep our businesses here and let them know how much we support them staying and growing within the, the town and the city of Groton. And as we we're putting this plan together, we didn't want it to just be another plan, another um, strategy or document that sits on the shelf and, and collects dust. We did a fair amount of outreach on this, uh, not only as part of this effort, but we also took together all of the outreach that we've been doing as part of all of our other strategies that we've been working on over the past five and a half, almost six years now in compiling all of that and what has changed in Groton during that time 
in putting that into this document to really make this um, the roadmap for how we can move forward in connecting the dots of what is going to be our economic development blueprint. And this you know, graphic here, again, shows just how complex this are and all these different dots and balls that we, you know, all of us as a, as a, as a team, as town government, as elected officials, as the people and the businesses in the town and in the city are constantly trying to juggle to make things happen and to promote economic development. I, you know, I, I can't stress enough the real purpose of this plan is this is the blueprint for us moving forward. And we wanted to connect all the dots because there are so many initiatives and items that we're constantly uh, juggling and talking about. And we wanna make sure that people understand how this whole framework really works together. So when we're talking about Groton and what the vision is, and this is something that we worked with the community, with the staff, with others, um, you know, from both the city and the town, how can we be the choice for businesses, for residents, for visitors, and for employees? We want to attract people. And that's, as well as having that diverse economy, Groton is really a great place to not only live, to work, to play. We have a lot of, uh, a lot of assets here, and we want people to see those, understand those, and also to understand that the staff, both of the city and the town, are here to work with them and help those businesses prosper. So how can we get our mission, how can we empower Groton to be, to really realize our economic development future and get to that full potential of what it is? I've heard from a lot of people, you know, in my time here, how amazing Groton is and how we just need a little bit of this. So we just need a little bit of push of that or wow, I wish more people knew what was here. And that's what we're trying to, to move along with this, uh, this strategy. And that's really been the effort you know, that we've seen from the council, from the manager, from the staff, from our boards and commission. It's, it's been really great watching and seeing how people are working together to try to get to that place. So as we start thinking about these goals uh, within the strategy, one of the most important goals that came up, and, and this is still a question I think people are having a hard time getting their arms around, is when we did the market analysis uh, about five years ago, we realized that of the 26,000 jobs that we have in Groton, only about 20% of those people live here. How can we get more of those people to live here, to spend their money here, to invest in Groton and make that their place? And then part of the, 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 um, the data as we started diving into this was we needed to diversify, modernize, and really grow our housing stock, as well as it, uh, you know, enhancing our amenities, our recreational resources. You know, we're constantly getting the question of, well, why don't we have this retailer in town? Well, some of it has to do, or a lot of it has to do with not having enough people here, the bodies that live here. We also still are getting questions. You know, I just had some last week um, from members of the RTM, you know, people asking about whether it's the Sealy School or the Mystic Education Center, and why are we developing there? And well, we need a modern, updated housing type. The housing types that we've had that have been developed have been a very different type of housing. And these are, you know, this is something that Jim Demesis talks about all the time. Uh, folks, I'm sure have heard Paige talk about these items as well, about getting a new updated housing type that people want to see. And that's why when people ask the question, well, are, are this, the units at Sealy, are those going to get rented out? Yes, because it's something different than what we have here. The same at the Mystic Oral School. Those are the types of housing developments and projects that we're trying to uh, get within Groton because they will modernize and diversify the housing stock that we have. The second goal that we're looking at is how do we shape those pockets of economic activity? So when we think about what are some of these key areas in town, whether it's Center Groton, whether it's Mystic, whether it's downtown, whether it's, you know, Thames, whether it's around the sub base, all of these areas are areas of activity where we want to get people to connect. It's not just about the businesses. It's about the people that are here, that lived here, that invest here, and making them feel like a part of a community and having that connectivity that we've constantly talked about. 
a key element to all of this about getting, you know, diversifying our, our economic base, about having a diversified housing stock, is making sure that we have alternative modes of transportation and adequate transportation and parking in some of our economic nodes, whether that's, you know, in downtown Mystic, whether that's in the city of Groton. We've heard that theme come up many times as we're talking about growth and development in the community. And even a lot of the developments that we uh, are proposing, uh, working with people on, we hear about, well, what about traffic? Can it accommodate um, the roadway? Can it accommodate this type of development? And those are things we need to invest in our transportation infrastructure. Our educational assets, I think, are something that we are not telling that story well enough, and we need to keep doing that. That's something that we recognize we all need to do. So whether it's the fact that we have, you know, Yukon Avery Point here, or the fact that between the town and the state, you know, with the new Grasso Tech, our new middle school, our two new elementary schools, the state and the town are spending over a quarter of a billion dollars on new uh, actual infrastructure in our school system. That is an amazing opportunity that people here should be very proud of. It's showing that we're investing in our education and we all know that communities that invest in their education are communities that thrive and continue to grow. John, I'm happy to jump in on this one. Yes, please, Sam. Oh, great, thanks again. Sam Eisenbeiser, Economic Development Specialist. Um, you know, I wanted to jump in on goal five it's really that gets at the heart of this ongoing goal to diversify that, you know, it's really been years and years that we've been uh, approaching this and this goal. It has two strategies really um, to do that. One business retention and expansion. And then the second one is business attraction. So retention and expansion is about supporting the local businesses that already have a presence here and ideally identifying those ones that may want to expand in the area uh, hire or, or take on more space. Uh, it really relies on building relationships with the local business community and then providing those resources and support um, so that those businesses can grow. Business attraction as a different tactic in this strategy is marketing to industries that are not currently represented in our area, but might be a good fit for what we offer. Um, industries that would benefit from our local assets, whether it's transportation, our research and development ecosystem, or the skilled workforce. If they relocated or expanded into our community, that would diversify our industry base. These industries would likely have some overlap with our existing clusters, uh, potentially representing the blue economy industries, such as offshore wind. Uh, Thayer Mahan, which is shown in this slide here, it keeps coming up as a great example of what we'd like to see more of. The, the company benefits from our local and regional assets, and it represents an emerging, growing in industry in advanced technology that offers high paying careers as well. Um, the other thing about goal five is that it reinforces why all these goals comprise a holistic strategy. A key asset that attracts businesses is a skilled workforce. And goals one and four that John just talked about they actually aim to attract, retain, and grow that skilled wor workforce in our community. So all the girls work together in this way. Um, what's often overlooked, but is a crucial element of this goal is the need for commercial buildings, uh, especially of a diverse spectrum of sizes. Um, if you take a look, for example, at Thayer Mahan, they're on a growth trajectory, um, but the airport business park is nearly at full capacity. Um, they want to stay in, in Groton. They aim to expand in the Groton Heights School, and that's uh, on track. But if they wanted to grow additionally, they could only do so as long as they could find the needed space. Um, we also hear from other companies looking for spaces larger than 10,000 square feet. As an example, uh, BioCT Commons, they had a life sciences firm that wants to graduate from their incubator facilities. They were seeking uh, sizable space in the area, but they had to expand their, their search beyond Groton because they couldn't find uh, what they wanted here locally. Thanks, John. Thank you, Sam. And, you know, goal six, providing an, art, uh, an environment that nurtures those kind of startup companies. So Sam was alluding to this a little bit. We have really tried um, helping our small businesses. So whether it was the startup and the growth of Thayer Mahan, I think you know everybody is familiar with the success of SIFT and really how they 
are starting to grow and have grown a lot within Groton. And we've been trying to help them to be a champion and uh, not only grow their business, but, you know, Adam from SIFT has been great to put the word out about how we will work with community members, with the business community to help grow things of what's happening here, because it's really important that we continue to diversify our businesses, but also I can't stress enough the importance of the communication that we have with our businesses, that business outreach that, you know, uh, our Economic Development Commission has been doing a lot of work on business outreach. They've made that kind of one of their main strategies to work on so that businesses know that we are here as a resource and will continue to be here as a re resource, uh, as well as the TRIP funding that is helping to start up a lot of these uh, small businesses and getting them to grow over time. And again, um, connecting, communicating, education on economic development, continuing this momentum of the city and the town working together. People often talk about, you know, what can I do to help with economic development? It's sometimes it's just being positive. I know I, I've said this to the council before, they call me a little corny, but just the more positive we are, the more we talk about good things happening within Groton and for the region, people are gonna see that, wow, this community, this town, this city is really invested in, in themselves and they want to help grow and support businesses here. So I think the more we do that, the more we keep doing outreach, whether it's small business forums like we had today, uh, letting people know how we can help them and how we're trying to adapt and change as businesses are hitting a hard time so that we're not getting in the way with rules and regulations so that they know the resources that are available to them and that, oh, wow, look at some of these efforts where the city and the town are working together on things like Groton Heights, you know, the expansion of electric boat as, as well as many of these other items. So I think that's something we all need to continue working on as time goes on. And that's really where I wanted to kind of uh, wrap up the um, economic development strategic action plan from the presentation uh, perspective. If people are interested in getting the plan, they can download it from our economic development website. There's a link up here. If people have questions of the staff, either of the city or the town, they can certainly reach out to our office, uh, exploremoregroton.com or cityofgroton.com uh, forward slash PED to get in touch with their economic development staff. And uh, with that, um, I will stop the screen share and go back to uh, where we were. So um, again, John Reiner here, Sam Page, and Jim Demesis from Camoin 310. If uh, folks have any questions, I don't know if uh, Page or uh, Jim wanted to add anything else. Hey, John, this, this is Jim. Can you hear me okay on that end? Yeah, yeah thank you. Oh, great. I'll, I'll just be very brief. There was just a couple observations I wanted to make. Jim Demesis with Camoin 310. It's been a pleasure to once again work with the town on this. I just want to mention a couple of quick things uh, to stress some of the uh, pieces that were already um, mentioned um, and give it some perspective. So one, um, one of the questions that's typically going to come out of this is going to be, what is the, um, you know, well, how does things change now that COVID-19 uh, is here and like, you know, we're, we're into a response and a crisis mode. And what I would say about that is, uh, you're right, and it's it's important to continue the plan. In other words, a lot of what's based in that plan is going to be true for helping deal with diversifying the economy, making the economy strong, and serving businesses. An example of that is you have had in the past, and it's also reiterated in this plan, the need for strong business retention and expansion doing business visitation, tracking that information, hearing what businesses need. Well, we know now that having that in place has been serving you well during this COVID crisis, and it will always serve you well. So you should stay the course on that, stress that, keep hearing from your local businesses. Second, when John says, um, the um, he started out with we talked about the diversity diversity diversifying the economy and we know that when we say diversify I want to be really clear 
we're not suggesting that the jobs at EB and the base and, and the defense industry are not critical or the pharmaceutical industry. They absolutely are. In fact, when you think about it, you actually have an advantage now where um, they're less, at this point in time, they're less elastic based on this crisis than, than many other sectors like tourism and so forth. So you're, you're faring better than other communities during this global crisis because you still have people going to work. Now, I understand there's a lot of pain on your businesses and workers in other industries, and I'm not trying to diminish that, but it's great that you have solid business base. Uh, but the question becomes, uh, like the goal stated, uh, how, me, how can we do more to keep some of the workers here living in Groton? And then also, how can we help support and then grow other businesses? And then finally, the final point I want to make is looking ahead, um, it, we, we should keep an eye out for a new data. So refresh the data as it's coming out. For instance, it's not valid to be looking at unemployment data in the last, you know, three, six months, it's all changing rapidly. It's bigger than we've seen it um, in, in forever. Um, but we should also be looking for opportunities where there's likely to be investors and companies saying, gee, it's too high of a risk to be in a major metro like New York City or even Boston. Not that those places won't recover and do well, but some people are going to be thinking, I've got to diversify my assets and I've got to be in smaller communities where there's a bit more open space that are a bit more livable and, and where the risk is therefore lower for future pandemics. So I'll stop there. I just wanted to uh, sort of hit on some of the highlights and how they relate to COVID-19. Thanks a lot, Jim. I uh, appreciate you jumping in. And uh, before we just kind of open things up to questions, I know Paige had a couple of quick comments he wanted to make also. Thank you, John. Um, I think it's important to realize that this action plan was initiated because we had significant momentum with a number of initiatives. There was a slide that was shown that showed all the projects and the initiatives that were involved in. We got to a certain point after the market analysis where we were trying to figure out how does this all come together? There are a lot of pieces to this puzzle and we have a pretty firm grip on our direction and how this pieces together. But we did realize we don't have a document that cleanly shows how all of this comes together. And the presentation tonight is um, it's an outline of the goals. It's not to be confused with the document itself. Probably the most important part of the document actually is the matrix that is not shown tonight. It's an action plan matrix with a number of implementation steps. Uh, it defines what step each one, each thing is, and then who is going to do it, when it might actually be accomplished, and how it all relates. So as we get more wind at our back and, and Grand's economy is, is growing, I, I know we're in a COVID situation at the moment, but as we advance this, it's important to understand how all of these pieces come together to create this larger vision that's in mind. Um, it really very much is an integrated approach. So with that matrix and the overall narrative and goals, that's the full plan. Thank you, Mr. Reiner. Is that everyone from staff that wish to speak? Yes. Thank you. Um, Councillors of Perry um, has the floor. Thank you. John, I'd, I'd like to thank you for all the work that you've done for the town and, for the, and, and congratulate you for the successes that you've had, you and Paige and your whole department. I'd also like to suggest that you, you add to your, your uh, matrix of the complexity of, of the idea of developing this town, a consideration for infrastructure. <clears throat> we really need to extend our sewers and our um, municipal water supply throughout the town. We have uh, uh, Eversource, I know, was putting in gas lines in parts of Mystic, but that's something that would be good to have throughout the town. And when we have those things, property values increase, of course, and that means our, our uh, tax base also increases and uh, we can get 
a lower mill rate for the people that we have. So just something to, to consider there. And education intrigued me, your idea of integrating education. We have one institution of higher education in Groton, and that's the Avery Point, University of Connecticut at Avery Point. And we pride ourselves for the opportunities we give our students at Fitch. Um, might it be possible to work for the Board of Education to work out something with Avery Point so that some of the Fitch juniors and seniors can actually go to Avery Point and register for one or two college level classes there while they're in high school. I think that this isn't for everyone, but there are some students that we'd like to give a boost and push ahead. And it might be an opportunity to accomplish that with a lesser expense. So those are just some thoughts I'd throw out to your, your group to consider as you're, as you're uh, dealing with people and uh, networking. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Zapari, I'm pretty sure there are opportunities for um, high school students to take um, courses for credit at um, UConn. I know at my school there are those opportunities, so I'm pretty much certain that Fitch also has our opportunities. Perhaps Councilor Melendez um, would know the answer to that as he's the one that's closest to... Uh, yeah. do, they, do they actually go to Avery Point or do they uh, stay at Fitch and have... Uh, uh, classwork assigned to them by Fitch teachers. Um, Councilor Melendez, do you want to take that? Uh, when I was at Fitch, uh, you take the class at Fitch. Um, the, the, the high school teacher has to get certified by the University of Connecticut, and then they are able to teach the class and you get credit. When I was there, I think they only had uh, English and history, I believe, but they might have more now. That's the same as it is at my school. And you can also get credit at Three Rivers. So I know we're digressing, but um, I do appreciate um, the fact that we're trying to integrate the education into this. And that the number that Mr. Reiner threw out, the quarter billion dollars that between the state and the town is spending on education is certainly something to be touting. Uh, are there other counselors who wish to speak? I'm not seeing other hands. Oh, Councilor Bordelon, you have the floor. Thank you. Um, thank you so much for the presentation. It's really exciting. Um, just going back on another tangent about the college credits at the high school from UConn, those were there when I was there 22 years ago. I don't remember exactly which ones were offered, but they were offered and they were streamlined the same way that Councillor Melendez had spoke. The teachers were certified to teach the course and then you got you know, college credit from UConn. So, but not going to the actual campus, but there was the availability to go to Three Rivers and be on campus there um, in my senior year and take a couple uh, computer courses. But anyway, but thank you so much for this presentation. I do agree that the schools and the facilities are an important piece. And I can't stress enough the impact of in, um, improving our sports fields in our town. That's another driver when looking at other communities in New London County um, in comparison to the quality and the structure of our sports fields. We have amazing teams in our town at the high school and um, amazing programs and coaches and staff. Um, but our fields are um, extremely outdated and looking at some of the funding as an economic growth in our town, because as we improve the sports fields and the facilities, it's an attractor of, of families to come in because um, they're children that um, participate in school sports. That's, that's a huge driver. Um, one of the other things that I think is really important when looking at the big picture here um, and it came known to me a few years ago is when you look at where our um, our businesses are that most people come into, they're in the city, you know, um, and it's important um, as the city progresses, looking at the TIF districts and such, um, and the collaboration that's already happening, which is wonderful with the city, um, to really work on the infrastructure in that area. Fame Street is the first landing pad when you come into the town of Groton. When you get off the exit and you're going for that interview at all these places in the city, it's important that um, we put some emphasis and some joint efforts into collaborating as we have to beautify that area and um, come up with some plans to attract businesses in that area, but also to retain people who choose to want to live in, in and stay in Groton. Um, that's, that's a driver. I mean, if you're coming in for an interview at uh, EB in the city of Groton from a different state flying in off the highway, coming in on your car, 
you don't really know that Mystic exists, right? That's several miles down the road. So trying to bring that same thunder onto the other side is so important um, to really utilize the strip and the city of Groton and five corners and all of those areas, I think is, I, I can't stress that being not being the top of the list. Um, when, you, when you go in for an interview at a job, you're looking at the area in which you see and that's your immediate platform. So I, I think you guys have some great ideas and I'm not sure how the big picture would look on that, but I definitely think some more support um, on that end would be huge and attracting um, young individuals that come here and decide, okay, I'm gonna take the job. Am I gonna live in Groton? Um, I think the water taxi is a great asset. Um, and you can take it over to New London, but I really think on the city side, we, it is not a, a stab at anybody in particular. It's been a problem for years. There's the lack of facilities on that side. I mean, I take the water taxi over to New London and I go to get ice cream, and the clam bar and go get a cocktail and go to a show. Um, and then take my water taxi back to Groton and I have Pulse Pasta. And, um, in the city, we lack a lot of restaurants. We have par four, which is a wonderful place. Um, but we really do not have a place where you can really, what, what I would call fine dining. If you want fine dining, you have to go to Mystic. When, when you have all the businesses in one side of town, when they have big corporate people come in to go out and dine, Pulse Pasta is great, but there's really nothing in the city that's considered like um, fine dining, high-end dining. And so really kind of, you know, highlighting that and getting how can we attract more businesses into that area to make that area be the clam bar strip, the ice cream strip, the little bit of bars and cafes. I mean, um, the new bar that came in, 40 Thieves on the end is a great, that's, that's awesome. I mean, seeing the traffic and people come through there has been wonderful. Um, and so it highlights that part of town. And um, so I just think that that area could use some support and I'm not sure how the town could look at this big picture and, and, and move with that to make things happen. Thank you. Yeah, no, and I think that's why, you know, as we look at EB's growth and needing that young population and new housing to create places where people, you know, getting those people, which will then drive new restaurant demand and that mixed use development. So a project initiative that uh, Paige has been working on with the city and New London that, uh, that Thames River Innovation Place. Uh, the city of Groton actually got a grant a few years back and was working on a plan looking at all of Thames and how can we revitalize that area. That's why working with the city, you know, initially on TIFF, we really said, hey, we, this is an area we know is a diamond in the rough. Yeah. It has so much potential. We want to get more investment down in that uh, in that district. And that's something we've really been trying to work with the city on. So it's, yeah. I know it's first and foremost in their head it's just it's been a tough nut to crack so no yeah. spot on. well thank you thank you for for all your uh efforts with all of that it's um i know it's it's that definitely something that's in the works and, and I, I i do think it's a diamond in the rough and on that coastal front there so thank you i just wanted to add at this point um my thanks to mayor hedrick and his staff for working with the town on this. Um, we are one community and it's vital that we grow together. So we appreciate um, the cooperation between the town and the city to work together to, to benefit all of us. And I am not seeing, I see Councilor Franco has her hand up. Councilor Franco. Hi, thank you. I think this is a wonderful presentation. I think it's, um, it's pretty high level. So when I read through it, I think it's like the big picture of um, items. And as Paige said, I mean, there's actually a checkoff list and a check sheet on how we're going to achieve these things. And that basically is in this uh, document. Is that correct? Yes. Um, so some of these items like focus of attraction efforts on targeted sectors, it said there was a local analysis in the industrial sectors that best led them to um, come up with these of advanced manufacturing, including defense, energy and environment, bioscience, agriculture, fishing and food production and maritime industry. So can you just tell me how on a local analysis, you basically came up with these? Yeah, so I think that was actually an analysis that uh, Kamoin had helped us out with, uh, if memory serves correct. I think Sam uh, was diving into that one pretty deep, as well as Paige. I don't know, Jim or Paige or Sam, if one of you guys want to jump in on that one. 
Um, this is Jim. I can get started. Um, just so you know, a couple of ways that you do that. One is um, we, we actually, as part of this work, did data analysis. So we were looking at um, we were looking at the industries based on past and recent trends in terms of the size of the industry, the concentration, and then um, and the growth potential. Um, but also, we had the advantage of we also worked on the data analysis for sector, the uh, regional organization, so that we were tying into what's the fit with the local economy, with the regional economy, including Rhode Island, but also the state of Connecticut and the sector region as a whole. So these were the ones that stood out as not that others aren't important, but these had the potential for targeting for investment and traction, being able to create high paying jobs or higher paying jobs, and also that were connected to exporting value, but also creating jobs locally. Okay, and so that's, a, so then my, as I had said earlier, then there's a checklist on how you're gonna actually try and lure them to our area. Correct, that's what the uh, matrix talks about in terms of marketing and attraction and uh, reaching out to those companies uh, and how to do that kind of work exactly. It's not an easy task, but it's also working regionally as well to do that, which, which your staff already is, but, but exactly, there's actually like a sort of detailed work plan with that kind of activity. Okay, and um, so something that I have, um, I've discussed with people and on numerous occasions is when I see um, as an economic driver in our area, <clears throat> oh, excuse me, an economic driver in our area, is that we are a shoreline town and I don't feel like we really act like it. I mean, I know sort of the mystic and no Ank area has that sort of down pat on the coastline, but other, other areas in our coastline, we sort of don't use that to the best of our advantages, I think. And is there anything that you have that to promote that and to, you know, as, because I just think it's very underutilized. I, I think, you know, that plan does speak to some of our recreational resources and something that I think we need to work with the state on moving forward is we have an amazing resource at Bluff Point and, you know, in Haley Farm. And that's one of the biggest coastal access open space areas in this region. I, I don't know of things that are of that magnitude right on the coast. And that's something we need to promote more and work with deep to make sure that, you know, the parking lot's graded, people know how to get to it. Some of the wayfinding signage, just so people know that that's a resource as well as, as that resource, when people go there and they leave, all right, what's around there? I, I remember um, the first time I went, you know, to Groton uh, for, it was actually a job interview and somebody told me, oh, you got to go check out Haley Farm and Bluff Point. And I drove down there after my job interview and was amazed at what a resource there was. But then leaving, I didn't know, oh, if I just drive, you know, a, a half a mile down the road into downtown Groton, there are all these shops and restaurants. And, you know, it took me a long time after that to finally, you know, discover Mignanas, you know, and, and places like that. So, or, you know, or Chester's or some of the great resources. And I think making sure that's where, we look at how do we tie this beachfront resource, this coastal community with some of the already great economic drivers and uh, infrastructure that we have here. You know, we don't have a ton of sandy beaches in town. That's something that's a little difficult. I think a lot of our coastal beach towns, people think beaches, they think, you know, white sand and that kind of stuff. We have, you know, Esker Point, we have some spots, but they're not maybe as promoted as well. And I don't know how much of drivers they are from pulling people in from outside. Is it something that we've identified within the plan to work on? Definitely. Um, I, I know Paige also wanted to comment on this. And you know, one thing that um, I certainly don't wanna leave off the table on this, and I think a lot of people forget about this, our marina and boating industry is absolutely amazing. We have a lot of infrastructure here, a lot of great businesses and what we support and that's something that we can also grow over time. That, that's a lot of money into our local economy. Right. Hey, Jenna, you had a thing or two to say about this? Do not have beaches either. I mean, they're oh, really, sorry. 
there's there mystic no ink area there's really there's not beaches there either i mean we're not driving people here to come to the beach but we have that new england quaint new england maritime kind of feel and look to it and that's driving people that come here and that want to live definitely. here and work here and you know so i'm wondering if we could do that i mean i don't want to have the mystic and a touristy area all over all over groton but i want to have it so that we can utilize this to drive business and as an economic driver, I think. Because, I mean, we have a lot of in industrial, I think, sometimes on the waterfront. And I don't know. I just think that, like, like as you were saying, there's more that we can do to build that together. Did I interrupt Paige? I'm sorry. Just a quick comment. I know um, we have others that are, that are wanting to make comments as well. Um, we already touched on the Thames River, and there is focus by Trip, the city, the town, the Navy, everybody realizes that we could do far better along the Thames. And I think it's starting to get more attention. And then with that, we did talk about Yukon Avery Point, but more than simply just a traditional um, educational opportunity there is talk of trying to try to make that realize its full potential with a focus on marine and not just for southeastern connecticut but basically connect that to basically a maritime educational facility from here all the way to woods hole massachusetts including uri and in others in the mix so I, I think that's part of that puzzle as well it's it's economy it's education but it's also using the property to a higher potential to serve an important role oh rachel your council franco you're muted oh, sorry one other aspect um how about in our downtown is there can I know we've had TIF down there. These are part of the things in your initiatives. And are there ways that we can, um, are there things in your checklist, let me just ask, to help try and bring in new business into our downtown Groton area? Yes. We'll consider that TIF district down there. Yes, yeah. I mean, I think, you know, TIF first and foremost is one of, the, one of our best marketing resources down there. Uh, the the there's kind of three big plazas down there that we've been trying to work with and getting people to look at and opportunities for reinvestment. Those are kind of some of our biggest uh, areas where I think we have the greatest opportunity. It takes time, it takes effort, it's a lot of money, it's a big lift. But even as we just see reinvestment in some of the smaller plazas um, and smaller, you know, one-off shops, that all that starts gaining momentum and, and does good things. Okay, thank you. That's for Bumgarner. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, are there anything? Are there any things that uh, um, the town council can do in terms of direct interventions to, um, you know, where so that we can begin taking steps to implement this plan? I, I um, just kind of skimming through. I, I loved a lot of the feedback from um, I think some of the participants in these, um, you know, the, these economic development strategies uh, brainstorming sessions. And um, wasn't sure if they're um, kind of through that input and their input, and then also their research that there was some, um, you know, some brainstorming about how council can make direct interventions to, you know, again implement this plan. Yeah, well, you know, I, I think first and foremost, just what you're doing right now. I mean, the the council has been incredibly supportive of our department, the initiatives that we're doing. You know, you know, directing John to work with us and and to push the bounds. You know, we we take risks when it comes to this type, when it comes to economic development, and it's paying off. And in the fact that we're you know uh, pushing on the redevelopment of our schools and our excess properties, that's big. That's you know us really putting ourselves out there. It takes a lot of time. It takes resources and effort. So, in you know, every time these opportunities come up we're bringing these things to you you're all asking very good questions uh you make us rethink some of the strategies that we're doing helping us refine these things so i, I think 
the, the relationship and the way that we work right now is you're helping us and you're helping to drive and through, you know, your budgets and the things that you fund, you as a council are driving this bus. So that in and of, of itself, I, I think is really the, a, a key piece. There will be other initiatives and items as you go through that matrix in the report that we're going to be bringing up to you and talking to you about, you know, it's not just a one and done. We got to keep moving and pushing this ball forward. It's, it's a never ending um, move to, to keep economic development growing and functioning because as soon as we get kind of oh, complacent and soft on things, that's where it really can spiral down. And I think, you know, Groton has leaned on the successes of the big three for so long, we've gotten complacent. And that's where once we saw, you know, Pfizer kind of take a step back, you know, about a decade ago, eight years ago, it really started worrying people. We got, you know, very lucky that we have such a strong defense industry here and the investment on that. So I think, you know, keep up with the support that you're doing. And I, I think as we really start implementing this plan, we're going to be coming to you looking for direction. Where do we want to put our resources? Uh, what are the initiatives that we want to jump on first? And sort of on that same wavelength, were there um, in those uh, brainstorming sessions, um, sometimes you have the kind of the same people attending and, um, you know, the same points made kind of ad nauseum. Were there any points made by and some participants where you said, wow, I never really thought of it that way um, or uh, just be, it could be anything? Yeah, I, I think, you know, it, it's always nice. Uh, I remember some of those brainstorming sessions. It wasn't just the usual suspects. There were a number of people that were showing up from the city of Groton, which was really great. So getting the perspective of those folks of what's happening there, the help that they need, and some of the strategies of what we can work together on. All right. Thank you. Okay, let's see. Um, Councillor Bordelon's already spoken. Is there anyone else who'd like to speak and then we'll go to Councillor Bordelon? Councillor Obrey and then Bordelon. Yeah, I was wondering, I have not read this whole presentation, so it might be here, but I was wondering, was there any uh, conv conversation he in here about a, um, uh, what do you call it? Where you have a place where buses, cars, and everything come together, a transportation center, um, so, so one of the okay. items, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No, that's all right. My question is out. <laughs> so one of the items that we have been talking about, I think, you know, it came up through part of the uh, joint land use study that we did with the COG working with the base was how can we do a better job of getting transportation within Groton because of having all these people having such uh, big employers here. So there's kind of two pieces to that. You know, the, the council had a presentation a couple of months ago now by uh, Zell Stever talking about getting mass transportation here, some of the train, you know, transit oriented development type of options. There's also the piece of that, you know, the last mile that everybody talks about. So that was something that is in this plan. And it's been something that we've been talking about, thinking about of how to work towards a better Groton internal transportation uh, network. It's it takes time, it takes a lot of money. Um, it, it, it's something we're not gonna crack that nut uh, overnight, but it is something that we know we need to work on. Thank you. I just wanted to say I enjoyed looking through the, uh, the presentation at the end in the appendix, you have all the documentation from the meeting in October of 2018. And I forgot that I had been there and I'm looking through and I see my handwriting. I was like, wow. Um, but there were sections on transportation and um, it was to, to go to what Councilor Bumgardner said, there was a really nice mix of people present at that meeting. Um, and it was very good once again, that um, representation from the city was there so that we are all working together on this. Um, we will go back to Councilor Bordelon because I don't see any other hands. Yeah, um, I just also wanted to stress another like important uh, section, I kind of look at the all of Groton, meaning the Groton town and city. I, you know, you think of Mystic, you think of like um, Dame Street, but you also see the airport kind of in the middle. And I can kind of really see that as the center and really looking at that, looking at the growth that has happened over there with the brewery, um, the Beards um, Beer um, Brewing Company coming in as far as, the, as well as the cheese uh, company. Um, and really looking at that area um, and really developing that and, and, and having some drivers there um, as well. So things are starting to happen there. 
Um, I know that there's no signage at the end of the entry there. It just says industrial park. I don't know, I guess it's like a zoning thing, but you know, even looking at down the road as things start to grow, you know, if you have people coming into that airport or the people who work at the reserve center there, having that sign out on the end, looking at that zoning, if it's possibly able to be changed to, you know, support, um, you know, as things change, re-looking at that zoning because having a sign there, you're just passing by, you don't even know what's back there, you know, and, um, and there's some great assets sitting right there that um, some people have trouble finding or don't even know are there because there's no signage and it's a simple zoning thing. So I just think that's another center point um, and uh, really looking at how we can kind of collaborate with that airport and, and really unify um, all of our areas. And I do think that you bring up a great point, um, Mr. Reiner, with the, you know, uh, the, the bluff points and the, uh, the um, Haley Farm and all of that. And really, you know, looking at having, it doesn't have to be a business coming in, but collaborating with our recreation department to have annual things going on. Like I always attend, you know, the Nyanic Boardwalk, walk or run, you know, and after I go get something to eat on the strip, you know, um, really bringing that in. Now we do not have a boardwalk here. That's something else that would be awesome to have to, to highlight on the coast, maybe on the Groton side uh, or Mystic side, but really kind of having annual things that the town kind of takes control over and having, you know, I attend Willimantic for the Cupid run every year. That's a fundraiser. Just having, and it could be held at Haley Farm or Bluff Point or even a run walk um, using the city, you know, ending at par four, bringing in business there, you know, kind of doing the whole Yukon loop, you know, those things are ways to attract people. And I go into other towns and find other restaurants and things. So that's another way, maybe not moving there, but it's a way of bringing people in. So really looking at that airport is another um, way. And I think somehow, and I, I, I don't know what, how yet, but getting some signage change or something where they can advertise their business that you can see from the airport parking lot. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Bordelon. I am not seeing any other hands. So Mr. Reiner, did you want to wrap things up or did Mr. Burt want to jump in at this point? Uh, nothing really to add. I, I uh, thought it was a great plan and I thank the staff for all they've done and Jim, you too. Um, if I could ask one thing. Yes, Councilor Obrey. Um, I know right now it would not be appropriate for what all the businesses are going through, but when we get through this horrendous time and we get back to where we have our stores opening and functioning, I was wondering if there was an opportunity that the GBA committee might actually walk around and give these to some of our businesses so that they can be aware of everything that's being done to try to drive more customers to their establishment. Yeah, we'd be happy to work with the Groton Business Association. I mean, we're always trying to work with them. They're one of our- No, know, I'm sorry. I, I meant your EDC committee. Oh, sorry. All right. Um, we'd yeah, be happy I'd... to do it too, but <laughs> <laughs> I just didn't know if there was any plan for them to really get out when things are different and really let people know you know, what, what we're working on. Just the yeah, top. I, yeah, yeah, no, thank you. Great. All right. Well, um, thank you, Mr. Reiner um, and your staff as well, Mr. Brock, Mr. Eisenbeiser, Mr. Demesis. Uh, we thank you for coming out and for all your work and we look forward to great things. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you all very much. Have a good night. All right, we are on to item six, review of agenda items. Um, I don't have anything else at this point, but we are going to go to other business and Mr. Burt wanted to address a communication that he received and I wanted to have it here. That way we could open up the floor for a minute. He needs some consensus from us. We don't necessarily have to vote, but we do need consensus. Sure. I, uh, by the way, I would like to thank uh, John Reiner and his staff as well as uh, Jim um, for their work on the plan. I, I had said something and I realized that I was muted. <laughs> so, <laughs> we all do it. <laughs> join, join the club. <laughs> yes. Um, I received an email from Clint Wright over in the No Ink area. He's heard of other places. I think his daughter's dance studio down in West Virginia. They organized a cleanup to, uh, it's kind of a media event. 
you basically using proper social distancing mask gloves to do some uh, cleaning up of doorknobs, railings, like at the police station for uh, you know more of a press things to get the word out on using proper social distancing, that type of thing. So I'm wondering if you're interested in that and uh, any ideas. So. I would um, just say first, um, Councillor Bumgarner had his hand up. Did you wish to speak to this Councillor Bumgarner or are you? No, Madam Mayor. All right, so then um, are there comments for Mr. Burt or objections? Councillor Obrey. Um, I think I had uh, just kind of popped back with a note that I thought that, I, I think this would be wonderful to do, but I'm, all, I'm almost wondering if it should be maybe either run by or in conjunction with the education departments of Groton. Uh, they're used to working with kids. They know a lot more about it than, than we do. And uh, I thought it might, it might run a little better that way. But uh, whatever way, I think it's great to go forward with it. But, you know. Yeah. Well, I'm not <laughs> sure if it's good. If it, it's gonna be, I think all age levels. And right now the Board of Ed, of course, isn't, you know, the schools aren't in session. So the, you know, I think that's why Clint was thinking the police station, just, you know, you know, someplace that's actively used and you think about, you want to keep people safe. Um, but either way, whatever the council likes, it's fine with me. But, but I kind of was going to leave it up to Jim, uh, Clint, since he was the one volunteering to put the group together. I'm not volunteering to do it myself. So we, you know, oh, more, or less, more or less whether you want Clint to proceed or not. <laughs> okay, so I have um, quite a few hands. Uh, let me just, so you know that I've seen you. I have um, Councilor Bumgarner who wasn't speaking on this. I have Councilor Franco, Zapari, and Bordelon. Um, do any of the Councilors Franco, Bordelon, and Zapari wish to speak on this issue? Yes. Okay, yes. Councillor Franco, and then um, Zapari and Bordelon. Um, just as recently as today, there was an article that some children are coming down with this, I don't even know what it's called, some kind of COVID, you know, side effect. Um, Kawasaki. Hospital. So I would like to um, not recommend having any children cleaning up and sanitizing COVID things in our facilities as cleaning people. I understand, I think he had a great, you know, his heart is in a great place and I understand what he's trying to do, but I just think I would rather not, but thank you. Sorry, Councillor Zapari. My concern is that uh, children being what they are, when you get them together on a project, they tend to stand very close to each other. And there might be two or three children actually cleaning one doorknob at the same time. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I, would be, I, I would be concerned about that if we're trying to continue social distancing. Uh, and I think we want to continue it with them as well, uh, oh, yeah. or perhaps preferentially. Pulling up the email, uh, sorry. No, go right ahead. I was going to say, pulling up the email, he does mention turning it, involving, I, I didn't see this, the uh, Little League or a school group or something. So, yeah, I'd be a little leery too, and just the optics of it, if it's going to be youth uh, doing it. Okay. It's a great heart, though. I you know, very much appreciate the offer. Okay. And I've said all I've had to say on the matter. <laughs> Thank you, Councilor Zapari, and we are at Councilor Bordelon. Thank you. Um, yeah, I think it's a great initiative. Um, I think getting the kids out to do something during this time, I, I commend his efforts and thoughts for coming up with something. I think it's a great idea, maybe driven by adults, maybe, maybe switch it from kids to adults, possibly. Um, but I think before one can have a, you know, idea of what is really wanted, I guess, having something a little bit more, you know, written up and in, in what the plan is, in how it would move forward. But I think with children, it might be kind of hard, um, but I think it's definitely a group of, of adults um, that are interested in, in, in supporting in that manner could be very useful to the town and helpful and a way of giving back and helping. Um, I, I think looking at some of our areas in the town, like, you know, um, 
places where seniors or people live in places where um, there's um, it's a multi-door entry where you have multiple people that have to enter during through one area you know helping clean those areas to keep seniors safe because um, they all have to access one door to go in and out for uh, groceries um, what have you the police department um, you know bathroom you know there's tons of things that could be done but I I think it should not necessarily be driven by children and I guess even though a child is considered a minor under the age of 18, I, I would say if it was like high school age, I would be in more support. Um, I think it'd be a great uh, way to do some community service for 16, 17 year olds, you know, um, but maybe not children. I guess that would have to be defined more. Thank you. I would just like to say I concur with Dr. Zapari um, and um, we appreciate Mr. Wright reaching out and um, being willing to provide service to the community. I am not prepared to endorse this idea at this point though, um, for the reasons that were stated. And I'm looking for other hands. So it looks like we have a consensus that we appreciate the sentiment, but we're not prepared to move ahead with that particular aspect due to the fact that it involved um, children working at this time. Okay. Okay, um, so we are on to another topic and Councillor Bumgardner had his hand up first, so we will go to him and then Councillor Bordelon. I would still wanted to finish on this topic really quick. That was what my hand was for. Oh, I'm sorry, I thought we had wrapped. No, I'm sorry, you, you missed my hand. Um, I just wanted to say that I encourage, can you just put the, if you respond back, encourage that if you wanted to submit something in a different style that it, I think it could be looked at. It's not a complete wash if it was more, you know, adolescent high school kids, you know. Right. Thank you. Okay, we will go on. Councillor Baumgartner? Yeah, no, I just wanted to inform the council as well as Manager Bird. Um, the governor in the last hour uh, issued further guidance on outdoor dining. Um, so he, uh, if you go probably just go to his web, the state website, uh, or just do a quick search of governor executive order, it'll pop up um, what some of the uh, guidance is. Um, seems like it provides a lot of uh, a lot of discretion to the municipality to implement changes with it, which is promising. So take a look. That is all, Madam Mayor. Okay, when we're done with the meeting, we can all take a look. Councilor Franco. I just want to put out there that I just, adult or child, I just don't think we should have people cleaning our, our town facilities for COVID right now. I just don't. So I don't support even a letter stating if he changed his, you know, criteria. So I just don't think it, it, we would want to do, I want to do that with town facilities. Thank you. Councilor oh, Zapari. I had, I, I had my hand up here for a new uh, uh, item. I think we all received an email from Ed Rice uh, yesterday or today, uh, he would like to see us move ahead with the uh, No Ink Gardens uh, to make something of an arboretum uh, with room for people to picnic and, uh, and with uh, uh, a, a playing field so that uh, uh, various people can pick up and do a, a pickup ball game. They don't have to do a, a formal board game uh, with a scheduled field, uh, but just uh, an open place. Um, I, 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 I'm for that, and I think sooner or later we should consider it. We should put it on our agenda and start moving forward with plans to develop that. It doesn't have to be developed all in one year. Uh, it can be done over a period of time and at low expense. Uh, I think the people in No Inc. are interested in it and would commit some of their own energy to it, if not their own uh, capital. So uh, if we can get that onto the agenda, I would be most appreciative. So Mr. Burt, um, I'm assuming Councillor Zapari is asking if that can come up on the um, agenda. I know we're very busy with the public health crisis, but um, perhaps you can take a look at the schedule and see when we could work that in. I know we were waiting to hear from uh, the fire district board, I believe as well. 
Uh, well, right now we had that draft plan, or not plan, but draft uh, study, I would call it. Um, John Reiner is working with the Conservation Commission to make some changes, so I'm just waiting for that final conversion. Um, I'll check on it tomorrow, though. I'm, I plan, I intend to bring it to the council as soon as it's completed. It okay, should be so close. Are you thinking a month or six weeks or something like that, or sooner? Some, something in that time range. Any less than a month, it basically be two weeks. I don't think it'd be in two weeks, but. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, all right, we've got a bunch of hands up. Um, I am going to see the people with hands up have spoken. If, if you're so going to continue to talk about the, the uh, Noe Gardens, I just want to say you should suspend the rules. Right. Um, so I'm going on to see if anyone else has um, an item here. I am seeing only Councilor Franco's hand. She's spoken. We'll go to you, Councilor Franco. So I was under the impression that the council needed to have three people give a refer, like um, approve the referral to get onto the agenda. Knowing things already been asked by the council to be on the agenda. I thought for this topic. So it's just going oh, to be that. For, if someone wants to bring it up, you have to suspend the rules. Um, Patricia, remind me, besides you have to suspend the rules and ask to be added. Right, we're not doing that this evening. Yeah. Councilor yeah. Perry was asking when it was going to be on the agenda, and Mr. Bird has clarified that. Um, and it is a standing item that we've been waiting to hear back. Um, Councilor Bordelon has her hand up again. Councilor Bordelon? Um, I just wanted to align my remarks with Councilor Franco. I just thought that maybe I'm confused about the procedure. Um, even standing items that people or councilors, I should say, in the past wanted to move. Um, there usually was more discussion and a consensus. So I just feel, I just want to make sure that I'm understanding process is all. I, maybe I'm a bit off, but. No, I understand the confusion. Um, mm -hmm. So this item has been out there pending and we've been waiting for a report back from uh, Mr. Burt and town staff. Mm -hmm. And um, we are looking to see when we would be getting that report back, at which point it would go on to the agenda as Mr. Burt presenting his report, and then we could open it up for discussion. Right. I, I guess what I was asking is, is there other items that we're still waiting to come back that, so is it- Exactly. So for example, if you brought back, um, I can't remember what you're working on. You're working on the, um, the school lapsing. funding. Yes, yeah. the non-lapsing fund. So when you're ready to bring back that back, we have you working on the report, you would tell us, you know, within a month, I'll have that information ready and then we could add it to the agenda. But it's not a, it's not a totally new topic. Mm. Okay, well, thank you for the clarification. You're welcome. Yeah. All right, so that's all I'm seeing. So I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. So moved by Baumgartner, is there a second? Second. Second moved by Zaperi. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> abstentions so moved unanimously we are adjourned at 8 14. everybody take care be well stay safe leanne it's great to see your face good night i was talking with you joe All right, and bye john bye. i still love you here let it grow <laughs> Looking great. <What> hair. <laughs> he's got curly hair yeah. my hairdresser <laughs> was on that meeting earlier today and she texted my wife that i desperately need a haircut <laughs> <laughs> My wife Hi guys. I thought you were looking pretty good. I noticed the governor has a haircut on TV today. Yeah. I don't, yeah. Uh, I don't think he's fine without haircuts. <laughs> good night, Juan. Bye now.